Monty's frenetic barking announced Hannah and Marcus's arrival, and they tumbled into the house in a bluster of bags and rucksacks and nappies and general baby paraphernalia. Hannah looked shattered. Marcus carried a sleeping Toby, still strapped into his car seat, into the kitchen, and placed him on the kitchen table. His little body jolted due to the heightened startle reflex, and he opened his eyes briefly, but then closed them again. Duncan enfolded Hannah in a big hug, then turned to Marcus and shook his hand. They got on well, Duncan and Marcus, and I was glad. My family was so small that every now and then I was gripped by a sense of absolute terror that something might happen to destroy it. I looked at Toby's red, scrunched-up face, and I marvelled at how clever Hannah had been to produce him, my grandson. Right, Duncan said, rubbing his hands together and smiling. How about a Christmas drink? Huh, I wish, Hannah said. There's a bottle of wine in that bag somewhere, but I suppose I'd better not have any. Any coffee going? Are you supposed to drink coffee? Marcus asked. For God's sake, it's Christmas. But won't it? One cup, Marcus. Her voice was unusually sharp. Marcus put his hands up in mock defence. Okay, okay, he grinned. Sorry. The lady wants coffee, the lady gotta have coffee. I made the coffee with hot milk just the way Hannah liked it. So, how are you feeling, I asked, after Duncan and Marcus had gone through to the dining room. Totally and utterly knackered. She sighed and sat down, pushing the car seat away so she could lean on the table and rest her head in her hands. It'll get better, you know. The first few weeks really are the worst. Is Marcus pulling his weight? He's doing more than his share, to be honest. She put her hands round the coffee and blew lightly on the surface. He's very good with him. She sounded a little sad. Then Toby woke up and started to cry. I'll take him, you drink your coffee. I fumbled with the catch on the harness that kept him in his car seat. It seemed so much more complicated than the clips I remembered. Here. Anna leant across, snapped the clasp open easily, then sat back with a sigh as Toby's cries increased in intensity. He can't be hungry again, surely. I only fed him a couple of hours ago. Come on, sweetheart, I murmured as I lifted him from his chair and held his warm little body against my chest. He looked so sweet in his Christmas red baby grow, and the navy cardigan that Hannah knitted when she was pregnant. We had a hell of a job finding those ladybird buttons, but Hannah knew exactly what she wanted. She had such a good eye for that sort of thing. He's perfect, I said, and so tiny and compact. I almost commented on how like Marcus he was, but something stopped me. Shush. I swayed back and forth with him as I walked around the kitchen trying to settle him. Shush, my little pickle. Let your poor mummy have her coffee. Shush, shush. Oh, shit. Hannah looked down. I'm leaking again. She grabbed a wipe from the quilted bag next to her and started dabbing at two wet spots that had appeared on her jumper. This keeps happening when he cries. She held her arms out. Better give him here. She lifted her jumper and held Toby in place until he seemed to sense or smell her milk and started to root frantically for the nipple. Then, after several attempts, he latched on and Hannah winced. So, I asked. She bit her bottom lip as she nodded. The health visitor said it was like breaking in a new pair of shoes, but either she's never had a baby or she wears shoes made of broken glass. I felt a flash of anger towards the health visitor. That's not very helpful, is it? Isn't there any cream they can give you? She nodded. But it doesn't get much of a chance to work, does it? It's like there's no escape. He's either clamped to a nipple.